best question of the week. How do I avoid cake face? Now, let's have a conversation. So this question got me to thinking, why would we associate cake face with something that is derogatory? I mean, I like cake, don't you? But not necessarily do we want to feel like we have a cakey or thick or textured appearance on our face. And usually when I have a client that mentions the phrase cake face or cakey makeup, usually they have a little bit more textured skin and they're meaning that very visually thick application. So I'm gonna actually walk you through my favorite steps on how to avoid cake face and to have more of a seamless makeup application. So without further ado, let's get started. So of course the conversation has been circling around me literally for the past month. Like the question has continued to loop around. So I actually took advantage of writing some notes. So if you see me look down, girl, I'm trying to make sure that I remember everything that led me to this video. So what I gathered were a few common mistakes that most of us make when we're applying our makeup. And what I noticed was asking clients, how do you apply your makeup? Usually the skincare step is either missed or inappropriately applied. So I'm definitely going to say for those of you that have oily skin, I'm definitely going to suggest to grab a product that's going to cleanse the skin as well as remove all the impurities from the pores, as well as you're going to want to make sure you apply the appropriate primer. And I'm seriously talking about applying a primer that you can use all over the face, not necessarily to pat into the pores, but really something that you can use all over the face. So therefore, the makeup is actually going to settle as seamless all over, so therefore the texture is not going to show as unevenly as the day progresses. For those of you that have dry skin, same premise, choose a primer as well as a skincare product that's going to remove the dry patches that tends to gather the makeup. And of course, with both oily and dry clients, definitely making sure that you find a moisturizer that is designed for your skin type. Next, one of the most common mistakes that I see clients make when they're trying to choose a foundation. Make sure you're choosing a foundation that is going to definitely get you through the day that you're going to have. Case in point, I tend to work indoors nine times out of 10, and I can actually choose more voluminous makeup because the climate is not going to alter the wearability of the makeup. If I am going to be on location, outdoors in more than 90 degree weather, I'm probably gonna choose something with a little bit more longevity, something that's really designed to go the distance. I'm talking about 12 to 15 hour makeup. I will leave in the description box a few of my suggestions for long wear makeup, high end as well as low end, but I do have some videos that give you high end and low end options, so I'm gonna also refer you to those videos. So making sure that you definitely choose the right foundation for the climate and just remember the makeup has to have somewhere to go if you're choosing a sheer 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 foundation and you want a sheer 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 makeup application then as soon as the climate changes that makeup is not going to be able to bond so making sure that you choose the right product for the climate that you're in next choosing the proper technique for setting your makeup this is probably Probably the number one problem that I'm seeing. Ladies are avoiding the translucent setting powder step. Some of my favorite powders are the Ket Cosmetics powder, it's no color, as well as the RCMA no color powder or colorless powders. Choosing a translucent powder really does allow you the longevity that you're going to want the makeup to wear. It's going to absorb any of the moisture in the makeup without really disturbing the sheen on the skin as well as the proper color of the makeup. It's not going to distort it. It's absolutely the best step in setting your makeup. But of course, once you're done setting it, then you can go on top of that makeup and apply a skin tone powder of your choice and therefore the makeup is going to lay smooth. It's not going to grab onto the foundation, which is going to show more texture as if the translucent powder would, but because it's colorless, it really does glide across the skin and therefore you can apply a color powder on top and it's going to lay flawlessly. Trust me on this step, girls. Invest in a really good colorless translucent powder. And lastly, after you've gone through all of those steps, 
the day progresses and you feel the need to want to touch up. I'm going to suggest not to grab your powder, not to grab your sponge, not to grab your powder brush. I'm going to suggest investing in a travel size of setting spray. Reapplying your setting spray on your skin to re-emulsify your makeup to allow it to be appropriately bonded again with a damp beauty blender. And you're going to use a light tapping motion to bounce the beauty blender across the face. Very, very light tapping motion. This is going to allow you the, the remolding of the foundation and the re-adhering of the foundation and the products that are already on the skin. So you can really analyze if there is more powder that's needed. In the event that it is, I would allow the powder that is left on the brush from the morning to be your last step in resetting the makeup. Do not underestimate the amount of product that is on the brush in the words of Beat Face Honey. And she is so true when that is mentioned. And gosh, if you don't know who Beat Face Honey is, I'll leave her link in the description box as well. So and there you have my favorite steps on how to eliminate cake face. Now, I do have to mention one other thing. Honey, if somebody's saying, ooh girl, you like you got on too much makeup, that makeup look cakey, and she ain't wearing none, honey, haters, exit stage left. We're not talking about taking advice from someone that has no idea the process that we divas go through. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, eliminate any of the bad thoughts that might come from cake makeup, because like I said, girl, I like cake. And I like a nice flawless beat. I like my face to be laid, honey. And if that means I gotta put 20 products on to get it to look like this, bring on number 21. Let go. So I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you comment down below. If you've trying any of these steps, have you been avoiding these steps and getting the cake face look? Are you feeling me? Are you feeling me? Make sure you comment down below. Also, you guys know I love to connect with you, so make sure you connect with me. Follow me on all my social media to never miss another upload. Click that subscribe button, girl, before you leave. Until next time, thanks so much.